Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at Arco Mora. I'm sure someone sent me a message telling me to check out Arco Mora, but I'm really sorry I can't remember who sent it and I can't find the message. But thanks for the tip whoever sent that in. Arco Mora stands for Arduino Controlled Model Railway and it's been created by a guy called Nico in the Netherlands. As you might have guessed from the name, the system makes use of Arduinos. And normally, as you might have seen in my videos, this involves uploading some code called a sketch to the Arduino in order to get it doing whatever you need it to do. If you're not confident with writing code, then this can be quite intimidating and a bit of a barrier to using this budget-friendly technology on your layout. But with the Arco Mora system, you don't need to write a single line of code. And the whole aim is to make the technology accessible to everyone. Nico has developed three programs for Arco Mora. The first acts as an accessory decoder for things such as servos, LEDs, relays, and solenoid point motors. The second is designed to support light signals. And finally, the third is a feedback encoder based on LocoNet, supporting up to 16 input channels for train detection. The key feature of all the Arco Mora programs is that they can be configured very easily without any programming knowledge. You can figure each one with a simple question and answer game on your computer. He's also developed his own bit of hardware called DCC Next, which combines everything you need onto a single circuit board. Once this hardware is configured, you connect it to your DCC bus and everything can be accessed using the DCC addresses. I really like the sound of this, so I thought I'd give it a go. This is the DCC Next kit with a USB interface and the housing box. This kit was just over 15 euros and then it was about eight euros for shipping from the Netherlands to the UK. I actually ordered this way back in May and it looks like there might already be a newer version out. Hopefully they're not too different and this is still worth looking at. Most of the kits are self-assembly. There was the option to buy a pre-assembled version, but I thought I'd see how easy it was to put together myself and it's a good opportunity to practice my soldering. That took me about an hour to solder together and I'm pretty slow. The instructions were on the Arco Mora website and they were really easy to follow. You have options when building this to configure the outputs. I'm going to set my DCC next up as an accessory decoder and I've decided to create eight servo outputs on pins one to eight with these three pin connectors and then eight outputs on pins nine to 16 have these screw terminals. The manual gives some examples of what's possible so I'm going to try some of those. We'll attach a couple of servos, pretending maybe one's for a point and one's for a signal, and then maybe we'll try an LED on one of the screw terminals. To configure the hardware, you'll need to download the Arkimora software from the download section of the website. This is a zip file that contains all the executable files you'll need for Mardec, RSIGDEC, RLOCO, and the upload tool. So I'm gonna plug in the USB cable and fire up the Mardec software. First we give our Mardec an address, so I've only got the one, so we'll give it one and press enter. I don't use a Rocco Multi Mouse, so no. And I'll give it a 25 as the default rotation speed. And I do want my servos to detach, so it's yes. And I want it to start up in the last mode that we were in, so one. Now we can configure each set of pins. I've got my little SG90 servo here, so I'll plug this in on set of pins number one. If you've seen my videos before, then you'll know that I use these all the time for changing points, signals, and any other animation I want to do on the layout. So I'll press P to program and select setter pins number one. Now you give it the DCC address, so I'm gonna go with 61. And it's gonna be a servo, so it's S. And it's automatically set the servo to 75 degrees and we can see the servo move. And you can test that it's working by pressing C and it'll move it to 105 degrees and let's move it back. And that's all working, so we'll press E to exit and save. And then I quickly went back and added another servo onto setter pins number two. I gave this DCC address 62, and I did this because I wanted to try out the signal bounce functionality. So my intention was to then connect the DCC next to my Hornby Select controller, bring up address 61, and activate the servo from there to check it was all working. Except that this didn't work with the Hornby Select controller, and I don't know why. The Hornby Select controller gets quite a bit of flack in the forums, but I've always stood up for it. I think it's a very easy to use controller. Yes, it's got limited functionality, but if you just want to drive your locos, then it's fine. 
And before everyone comments saying that it's because it's not NMRA compliant, I believe that as long as you have the latest firmware, then it is meant to be NMRA compliant, but that it's not necessarily NMRA certified, which I understand to be slightly different things. Anyway, for whatever reason, it didn't work for me. So just something to be aware of if you use the Hornby Select. So instead, I loaded up JMRI with my trusty DCC++ base station. In the turnouts table under the DCC++ connections, we hit add, put in hardware address 61, and we'll give this the name Servo P1. Hit create, turn on the power, and let's see if it works. So that works, let's add in the second servo on address 62. I blue tacked a crossing barrier onto it because I thought that might make the bounce more obvious. Uh, they both work, but I don't think the bounce is very clear on the second servo. I probably just need to adjust the settings, but I'm pretty happy with that. So now let's move on and see if we can add an LED onto one of the screw terminals. I've connected my little LED lamp post to the screw terminal at position 9 because this is a connection that supports pulse width modulation and it lets me try out the flicker functionality. We'll give it DCC address 64 and this is going to be an accessory type. Now it's asking for a mode and this is where we can tell it that we want it to flicker. There are 9 options and these are really useful. You can have it steady, flashing, fading or flickering. I want to see what the flickering option looks like, so that's option 8. We need to input the minimum brightness, so maybe 50, and the max brightness will be 255. Let's save that and give it a go. In JMRI, we'll add a light on address 64 called flicker, and let's see if that works. So that looks really cool. That would be perfect for a gas lamp or a fire. And this is an effect that you can't recreate in JMRI. You either need to buy special flickering LEDs or write the code for it. This option in Arkamora makes adding flickering to any LED really easy. So that's a very brief look at Arkamora. There's plenty more to explore here, but I'm already very impressed. It's an extremely easy system to use. The programming interface makes configuring everything very straightforward. The DCC Next is a smart looking piece of kit, especially if you get the housing. And the best bit is that were you to just order the DCC Next circuit board and components and put it together yourself, then it costs less than nine euros, which is about 50p per accessory connection. To put that into perspective, off-the-shelf products from the big brands are around 10 times as expensive, and some don't have the same options that Arco Mora offers. The ability to easily set up things like signal bounce and LED flicker take this to the next level, and I'm sure there are other features that I didn't even have the time to look at. Plus, Nico has made all his work available on the Arcomora website, which is incredibly nice of him. So you don't need to buy the DCC next, you can build circuits yourself or make them from bits brought elsewhere. So overall, if you want a DCC accessory decoder, you don't want to spend a fortune and you don't like coding, then this is definitely worth checking out. Do you already use Arcomora? Are you considering it? Please share your thoughts and experiences down in the comments. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate it. If you'd like to support the channel financially, then the option to become a channel member is now available and I've also got a Patreon and both come with some perks to say thank you. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon.